Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in Elm Creek. With silage additives you can increase your yield. So there's some side like forage wagons and stuff that you can use the silage additive and you get extra uh, silage coming off of your field. I believe that is actually worth using as far as the game's concerned. So is this one, mineral feed can be added as part of your total mixed ration to feed. That's all it tells me. It can be added as part of the total mixed ration, but what does it give? I've no idea about that, and I have not yet been able to find any information, so we'll need to test it, but what I would prefer is if someone else already knows, please tell me in the comment section, what does mineral feed do for the TMR? I've got no clue at all. This, I love this idea. A diesel canister, $25 you pay for it, and you can pick it up and carry it by hand, and then, so you don't need to go and buy a big diesel bowser if you run out of fuel. I love that idea. Such a simple, simple, easy idea, and yet so very, very clever. It's, it's perfect. It's, it's just what we wanted. It's absolutely amazing. That beehive over there, it has been pointed out that maybe that's a little bit close to the yard and the bees might get a little bit upset with what we're doing with everything there. That dog really does not like staying home, does it? He likes to wander. Um, so yeah, the beehive over there, it has been pointed out that maybe those bees are a little bit close to rather a lot of industrial action going on around and it, they might get upset. Not really like it there. That's what I wanted to get. Was that cultivator over there? And you know, it's it's probably not the best place for them. I'm inclined to agree. It's it's not a brilliant place for them. We we mostly put it there as a test, but we're we're gonna have to move the beehive. I don't really have the money to do that at the moment because you don't get all your money back when you sell a beehive. Um, to go and get a new one. So, I'm quite sure what we'll do with that. I'm going to bring you over here for a minute and shut you off. Cultivator on there. So, what do we do with this one? I mean, we have the honey turning up right here next to the silo. Now, I've got no problem with that. That is, is absolutely fine. Um, let's do this a minute. Let's, let's, let's do this, shall we? So, we'll go into construction in here and we'll click on that beehive right there. Value 2,192. So, we'll sell that. Yes, okay. Job done. And we will go and put another beehive down somewhere else. So, once again, I do have the ability now to level the ground around these beehives if I want to, to lift it up and put it down again however I want to do it. I've got a bit of... Um, we've got several bees in there already. Let's go to the bees over here. I've got one mod one at the moment, which is the equivalent to the 33 Langstroths. Right there, that 19,000 euros one, uh, dollars one we've got. That's the one that we just sold. Or we could go for a 12,500. And they're going to leave us 2,500 left. I'm still thinking we should go for that one because of the extra honey production that we get. And the honey production, I think, is quite a good thing. Also, it helps the yield. Although it's not going to help the yield of either of the two crops we've got planted right now. That being said, eventually it will help the yield. So if we spin that one round, and we'll put this one down over here. This is going to go back here, out of the way a bit. And I'll plonk it down there like that. And I'm going to go into landscaping. I'm going to go here with this. It's kind of just plonked it up into the air a bit there, but it hasn't done too bad a job with it. We'll just leave it like that. There we go. That's fine. Okay, so we've got another one placed down. That means that we're going to get some more honey coming up here. And then we can use either... Uh, actually, the only thing that I can use is the trailer to go and pick it up and move it. Because we don't have pallet forks here anywhere, do we? Oh, that's all right. Okay, how are you doing? You are almost done doing the planting there. So we can go back over to the roller here and we can start rolling this field. Which means that we get to roll in all of the little stones and it will also roll the field at the same time. So let's spin you around like that. There, Cambridge rollers we call these in this country, in, in, in my country, the UK. 
I don't know why Cambridge Rollers. I'm guessing maybe because they originated from the area of Cambridge. But, um, yeah. The Cambridge Rolls. Um, what do they call them in your part of the world? These big rollers like this. I mean, they're really good because if you have one that's just one great big solid roller, if something breaks on it, you've got the entire solid roller to go and replace. Whereas the Cambridge Rollers... You have a look closely. You see each of these little rings on this thing? Each of those little rings is a separate roller. Now, what they actually are, um, at least the ones that I used to use, was you see the bit with the narrow teeth? That's a narrow plate that goes in there. And then the bit with the wider teeth, that's a, a roller section. And so each of them is separate. If you go over a big stone and you accidentally break one, what you do is you get it back to the workshop and you undo those four bolts on that end. And you undo the four bolts on that end and then you can pull it forwards. And then there's a just a single metal bar that goes right up through the middle of it. You pull the metal bar out. You can remove the broken ones and shove them all back up together. And then you put fresh ones on the outside edge. Or you can put the new ones right in the middle. This entire, you know, There's no set way of doing it you don't have to put the new ones anywhere in particular but it's actually really easy to go and replace those sections but I say easy using the word kind of loosely because it is still rather hard work to go and do it I've helped to actually do that job so it's a physically demanding job but it's still a relatively like the theory behind it is all relatively simple Right? It's, it, it's nothing particularly mechanic, mechanically taxing. It's still hard work to go and do it. Um, but the, the, the whole process is, is relatively simple. Just pull the bar out the middle and slot in the, the new rolls on the bits that are broken. Now, the farm that I worked on, they used to do a lot of rolling. And they had like two and a half thousand acres that they did loads of rolling on every year uh, after they'd done their planting and doing that two and a half thousand acres each year rolling the entire lot you would maybe across the course of a year uh, break one to maybe three rings you'd keep an eye out if you did break a ring and you noticed it you would have to keep an eye out in the field for the great big chunk of old iron that was left lying in the field where it got broken but you know, generally speaking, it's it's not the end of the world. You, you, you've got a bit there, and you just keep having an eye out for it in the future. Then we went and bought some new land. The new land was the stony bit. Now, I may have mentioned this before, where we actually went... We had a JCB digger, where we were using that to go and dig up a whole load of the big stones. It was in an area that was famed for the quarries and that that were there. And there was a lot of stones in the ground. Like, we were picking... We, we started actually having to pick stones by hand in places. It was ridiculous. We removed tons and tons and tons of stones from his thousand acres that we bought on this estate. And when they did the rolling, I didn't do the rolling, it was a, there was a, one of the tractor drivers, he actually quite liked doing the rolling. He found the job peaceful and relaxing, and so he did just about all the rolling. Now, we're talking about someone who can roll two and a half thousand acres of land and break maybe two or three rolls, two or three rings in an entire year. He went and did this thousand acres. <laughs> He had to take the roller back to the workshop uh, part way through. Now, the land was a little ways away, so we had to drive it all the way back to the main farm um, so that uh, the broken rollers could be replaced. That, we had a set that were, it wasn't five sections like this one, it was three sections, so it was a bit narrower than this one. And I think you've got maybe 25, 22 to 25 rollers on each section. Uh, the first time he took it back, there was a total of 14 rollers that needed to be replaced. He'd done about a third of the land by that point. And then he just kind of, the, the manager said, no, don't bother bringing it back next time. Just just keep going and finish the whole lot. We need to get the rolling done. Um, 
So he stayed there and he rolled and he, he doesn't he, he wasn't driving fast He was doing the rolling properly, but because just because of the sheer number of stones You know the thing goes up over a big stone and it then drops down onto another stone. It's just constant things like that is going to end up cracking and breaking the roller it brought it back now if you say that there are 22 rolls on each section then we had when he brought it back the second time there were 33 rolls that needed replacing right it's almost exactly half of the rolls on that roller the second time the first time it was like close to a dozen uh, the second time he brought it back, it was almost exactly half of the rolls had broken. Right, it, you, 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 you understand that? Half of them. Half of the roller disintegrated trying to roll this land. We had to replace half of them. This is the bit that I helped with, um, pulling it out and, <laughs> and then moving out. There were so many broken. It was ridiculous. And we spent weeks and weeks and weeks just with tractor and trailer and picking up stones by hand. Uh, we had the JCB there because the farm had a JCB. Uh, in the States, you call them a backhoe digger. Um, uh, we had that one there as well for the big stones trying to pick them up. And... It was just a nightmare. It was absolutely terrible. We, we we reckon we must have removed a hundred tons or more of stones just in a month, while we was we were sort of trying to fit that in and the other stuff. Um. So yeah, stony ground can be a bit of a challenge for those rollers. The rollers are good, and if you do break, but I mean, if we'd had like the grassland roller in here, let me show you the grass and roller in a minute. Uh, roll grassland care here. Not that one. That one is all. That's that's separate rings on it. I've never actually seen one like that. Not not the the rollers looking like that. That looks a little bit different. Um, this one. This is a lot more common for actual rollers. It's not individual sections. It's one big drum. And if you have a look there, you can see there's a little bit there. You actually fill that up with water. You, well, you, you're not necessarily completely. I think a lot of people will fill it up to about that point with water, something like that. So you're filling it up uh, probably nine-tenths with water, something like that, maybe four-fifths with water. Um, and then you use that to roll your field. So it's one great big thing. Now, if we'd use that and it cracked, then obviously all the water runs out and you got no weight at all. You've got to replace the whole thing. Which is why this is used for grassland care, because you're not going to have big stones like that on grass, because the grass is just grass. It's, it's nothing else. Um, this is very common where I live, just one roller like this. That is filled up with water. The farmer sticks the hose pipe into the end of it, fills it up with water, and then he will use it in the fields. I've not seen any like this to transport along a road. Normally, it's just the hitch and that bit, and then they go up the road or like drive around the farm very, very carefully with it. If you're going from one field to the other, you don't empty out the water in one place, and then you take it over to the next one. You leave it full of water. You drive very very slowly when you're driving down the lane because you don't want to crack the cast iron uh, around the outside. You you do that extremely carefully. Uh, but that's the rollers that you generally would use for grass because you haven't got all these stones everywhere. Um, whereas the Cambridge rolls over there, that's altogether different. You've got, you got that beautiful, all those uh, wonderful rings on it. Just Makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah? You, you break one of those, you've only got a little section to replace. So much easier. Right, anyway. Um, we've we've done all the planting. We, we le, le, What else do we need to do? So we've got sorghum in 45 and 49. We've got oats down there. We've got soybeans in the little field there. And then this one is barley up here. Now... I think I was talking about having some pigs here, wasn't I? I honestly, I don't remember. It's like, I do apologize. It's been a long time since I was able to do any recording. Um, I don't think I've recorded hardly anything through the whole month of December um, because of being ill and so on. So, uh, yeah, I do apologize if it's all a little bit disjointed. Uh, but if we go into the soil composition thing over here. So we know that we mulched it all, so we don't actually need that bit up. Now, the needs rolling. Field 45, we need to actually go and roll that field. So we'll go and do that. 
we get that one done. We've got no fertilizer on 48. We do have on 49. 46 with the brown. That's covered in weeds. But, oh, and it also needs plowing. So get rid of those two. And it needs rolling. I can't roll that one. It needs lime as well, although I think that's a bit too late for the lime. Uh, it does have fertilizer. So we'll come back to field 46 later, and we'll worry about that one some other time. Uh, and then we've got the mulch bit. I don't want the mulch bit showing up. Field 44 also needs plowing. I do love that with the 1.2 update, they did remove the needs plowing, needs lime bit all over the land that you don't actually lime and plow and so on. I think that's a nice step forward, that one. is a step in the right direction. So we're going to roll field 45. We want to put fertilizer on these three fields. Field 44 also needs rolling. Right, so we, we need to put on a whole load of fertilizer. That's, that's what we need, is we need a whole load of fertilizer. So let's first of all, we'll go and get the roller. We've got a little bit of rolling still that we need to do. Didn't realize that. We can't roll that one. That one's um, too far grown. I think it would end up destroying the crop. We can test it, actually. We'll unfold the roller, because we'll go over and we'll roll the little field as well. It won't take long to do the rolling, but we'll just we'll test a little tiny bit here off the side. So if I uh, lower that one down like that, and then I swing it round, we'll just see what happens. When I roll the corner of that field. Didn't do anything. Let's try that again then. Huh. Does actually seem to do anything? Right, well it's not doing anything there, and if I go here now. It hasn't removed the need for rolling either, though, so we, we haven't got that. That bit's not um, come into it. Now, in theory, I should be able to roll this one, and it'll remove the need for rolling from this field. So we'll do this one here, and we also want to do the little one, and then we want to put fertilizer on the field. Now, we've got the sprayer parked up in the shed. Not sure what I've got in that one, whether I've got herbicide still in that one or if I've got something else. We have got the solid fertilizer spreader there that's currently full of lime. We could always use that one. No reason why we can't, really. Let's come on up here. I love this tractor. Listen to it roar. They've done some good work with the sounds as well with 1.2. It's kind of like opened up the, the, the noise levels again. Listen to that. Sounds beautiful. I got a headset on, so I don't know if it sounds better to me than it does to people who aren't listening to the headset. Ah, I love that sound. And I think that sounds absolutely amazing. I think that sounds absolutely beautiful. Right, so I'm going right into the field there. I don't think it's going to remove the need for rolling on that little bit on there, but we've removed the need for rolling here. We've got one layer of fertilizer on here. Uh, so field 46 right there, if I just... No, it hasn't done anything to change that. Okay, so that's, it definitely doesn't once it's gone past that stage. Um, because I've got the crop destruction turned off, I'm guessing that's why it's not destroying the crop when I go over it with the roller, because in theory it should destroy the crop. Uh, but I've got that bit, that function turned off, so we're, we're not going to have to worry about that, which I think it is probably a better thing. Um, fertilizer. That's the only thing now, is we've got to get some fertilizer. So I want to be able to get fertilizer on here and on the, well, most of our fields, actually. It's only that one right in front of us that is fully fertilized. I'm getting a little bit fed up with rain, must be said. We've had rain here for quite some time. Let's lift that one up like that. We'll run it over here. Can we squeeze through here without having to fold our roller up? Back down again. It's a good job we got rid of that beehive, else we wouldn't have been able to get in here. 
that one up through here. So the field that we've got with the greenhouses, that one is going to become sort of part of our yard, that, that one out through there. Uh, we'll end up putting some sheds and stuff in that one and we'll use it like that. And it also the same with this little field right here. This one is also going to be part of the yard and we'll use it like that for putting buildings and stuff down. Now that we've got this mod that allows us to... I know I didn't quite go out to... That's actually going to really bug me. I didn't go right up to the corner there. I did just get the corner on the other one, but I didn't on this one. There we go. That's better. Um, the... Now we've got the mod that allows us to modify the terrain up against and underneath any of the items that we place down, it's going to be a lot easier. So we could use the two fields up there for turning into our main yard. Uh, we don't have to go and use the flatter fields to do that if we don't want to. Now, to be honest... I think I would still prefer, like, this area here, this is perfectly suited for turning into a bit of a yard. And then also through there, just across that bridge, I think it would be quite nice to have some more of it over there. And then that, those two longer fields, for now, we keep them as crop fields. We'll do something with them. I'm pretty sure I was talking about getting pigs. I don't fully remember everything that I was talking about, but I'm pretty sure I was talking about getting pigs, because I'm doing cows in other things. I've got sheep going on the Hardcore series. i got cows going on the um, Time-Lapse series, so it was sort of doing stuff with the cattle on there. But I haven't got pigs going anywhere, so I think I was, that was my logic for having pigs going in here. And it, I mean, it does make sense. Definitely does make sense. Now, what have I got in here? Is that fertilizer? I think this is herbicide that I got in here on this sprayer. That is herbicide. Okay, well, I'll just leave that one there. I won't do anything with that one. And we will go and get this. I don't have any other fertilizer sprayer, do I? We're going to get this one over here. Yeah, because that lime tank over there, and then this one here, oh, this one's got liquid fertilizer in it. Oh, there, yeah, right, I've got liquid fertilizer. No, that's, that's herbicide in there. And you have got liquid fertilizer in, but the front tank has got herbicide. Just to confuse us all. Alright, now I remember what we had, so let's go back to this one and we will put a bit of fertilizer on the field using the sprayer. So we can just have... Oh. Oh, I see. That's the other way around. Right, so I need to get rid of the tank first. That's got herbicide in it. And then I can go and pick up the sprayer. It would have been better if I'd put the sprayer the other way around. So let me go in like that. Pick that one up. Oh, this is so cool. It's actually echoing a little bit with the vehicle being inside the shed. Oh, I'm getting like a proper reverberation in my headset. From this vehicle being inside the shed. I don't know if you're picking it up on the video afterwards. I've no idea what this is going to come out like with the editing. Um, but I am getting this definitely reverberation going on with it being inside that shed. That was so cool. They've done so much work with the sound. Like, it, they, they really have. They've actually, like, put a really decent bit of work into the sound. That I genuinely hadn't noticed that before. That was absolutely wicked cool. That, that was brilliant. Fantastic. I hope we get more of stuff like that. Okay, so I've got one layer of fertilizer on there and one on 49. We've got nothing on 48 or 44. So we'll see if we can put anything on these fields. That is spraying right there. Actually, I think that is at about the halfway point. I've restricted... That's not the halfway point. I'm going to have to open it out to the full thing. I did a partial restriction on this one. No. 
something I do love now that we've we've got that. That's actually an option. I'm really, really impressed with this game. Like FS22, I am genuinely impressed with it. I know that there are some people who've got complaints still. It's, I know that there are some issues um, that some people are still having, um, but genuinely, I'm like I, I look at the I go on some of the forums and uh, see the complaints and that that are coming up and what people are saying that's not working or what they don't like and so on. And I'm looking at this, and I'm scratching my head, and I'm thinking. Have you got a different game to what I've got? Like, I, 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 have you genuinely downloaded something that's different, a, a completely different game to what I've got in front of me? Because, yeah, there's a couple of issues that I've run into, but generally speaking, I haven't had any is like, nothing game breaking, no nothing major like that. I, I, I'm, I'm, I really struggle to understand what's going on. Well. Why? Why is their game so so terrible? What what what's happened that their game is so so much worse than what I've got? It, it genuinely does feel like they're describing a completely different game because I don't have any issues like that, and maybe I've just got lucky and I didn't get any major problems with my version of the game. But I mean, I would have thought I'd get at least some of the bugs. But then that's the whole thing with releasing a brand new game. You, you, you release a new game, you've done all your testing, you've done all your QA, you've, you've tested it, tested it, tested it, and it comes out and it's looking pretty good. Um, you haven't got any issues there. And then you get 25 million people who, well, maybe not 25 million, a million people, because they sold a million copies in like the first week or something obscene. You got a million people, which means you don't have a million identical systems that it goes on to. You got a million people with a million different systems and different configurations and different everything. And surprise, surprise, there's a whole load of bugs that didn't come up in the office because they didn't have one million different configurations of their PCs in the office. They only had about six. And this is where the difficulties arise. And I know that there's also some issues with console, but I've, I've no idea. I don't know anything about console. So I don't know how issues arise with the console, how they would get missed, overlooked, what have you. I've, I've no idea. I know that there were some bugs that had turned up, especially to do with downloading mods, but they've now patched that, and so consoles are uh, once again able to get the mods off of the mod hub and have stuff working in there and that all seems to be tickety-boo uh beyond that i don't know no idea but for me personally i've not had any serious issues with the game i've done a lot of recording the only issue i've actually had with the game is not from the game itself as such it's been my recording software not recording or streaming properly. Uh, that's to do with the NVIDIA stuff. Um, quite what caused it, I don't know. Um, whether or not the person who made my recording software will be able to... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.